It's Super Saturday yet again in IPL 2022 and we of course are going to be previewing KKR vs GT. Don't go anywhere, it's going to be a sumptuous affair. And to preview it with us, we have of course Dirk Nannis who's dressed in black, I'm dressed in black, so maybe we can call this Men in Black Part 4. W what parts are they on right now, Dirk? Do you know that? Is it turning into the Police Academy where there's 12 of them? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It seems like there's a new one all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, of course. But look, let's get straight into the thick of things right now in terms of asking about Kolkata first because their last three games have been defeats. And it makes you think about their bowling even more because I'll put up a stat first and foremost. They've scored 170 plus in all those three games, but they've ended up in the losing side. This definitely points all fingers towards bowling, right? I think so, um, and it's not, they've got a couple of frontliners who their economy's fine. Sunil Narayan is, just delivers year after year, he's got an economy rate of 5 at the moment. Um, Umesh has arrived 7.3, then you start going down. Um, Chakravanati is 8.8 .8, and then everyone else, so that means their fourth and fifth bowler, everyone else is going over 10s. And you cannot put a good run of form together when you've got, you know, two, eight overs going at over ten guaranteed every single time. You know, Pat Cummins is getting tapped around the park here. Everyone's just getting tapped around, and they haven't found that answer. So, um, no, they're they're making runs, and that's good, but they just can't defend at any stage, and that that's the real issue. You're not going to go far in a tournament if you can't defend. Yeah, we'll come across their batting positives in just a bit. But I want to ask you about a particular bowler in Varun Chakravarti because he's been blowing cold, especially in the last four games, if you see the data here. What do you put this down to? Because obviously it's taken a toll on his confidence. Do you think you'll drop him for a couple of games and then bring him back in? But who do you drop him for? Uh, that, yeah. That's the problem. And, and when you look around, I think you're pointing the finger at the wrong person. Um, I think he is... Uh, yeah, maybe he's had a little a dip in form, but I don't think that's necessarily. I think you're looking in the wrong places to, to try and find the solution. Um, yeah, his form hasn't been horrible. Um, his numbers are okay. Uh, you know, he, he has the ability of being of beating the bat on both sides, which is a good challenge that you really want in a team. Um, but he just hasn't been supported at the other ends, and not not two of the other two bowlers I mentioned earlier. So it's it's. It's just a challenge, and I think when you've got someone like this, it's, it's sometimes a bit easier to pick someone in his position to flick. I don't think that's the wise choice necessarily. That's only totally fair to ask an Aussie about another Aussie in terms of Adam Finch, because he showed a glimpse of what he can bring to the party, which is the IPL, the last time around. What is his role exactly for the Knight Riders this time around? Obviously, it might not be a long-term pick, but what can he kind of do in this season right here, right now? I think the important thing for him, and I think it's been important over the last probably 18 months or so now, it is strike rate. And that's what I really like about what he brought in the last game, striking at 200. Uh, I think his weakness is that he's maybe been a little bit too conservative in his batting over the, over the last sort of year or so. Uh, and it's really been strike rate and intent and I think he really showed that. Oh, I think it was desperately unlucky <laughs> that he hit one straight short cover and ran out sort of right at the other end <laughs> the other night. But at least just a side of intent that he's trying to score and trying to, to um, you know, tap, have the right positive mindset. Um, and I think that needs to be his role. As to what that means uh, to some of Ryan's position as opening the batting, uh, I don't know. His numbers aren't flattering this year, you know, averaging What's he averaging five or something like that with the bat? Um, it's not too flash. And when you've got Finch going at the other end, if he continues that strike rate, I'm not sure you really need someone like a Sunil Narayan at the other end. Maybe you need someone who can more craft an innings and put together a big innings. Because um, generally speaking, you want the best batsman to face the most balls. He's good for a little cameo, but if you're getting that strike rate out of the other end, maybe it's better to give the... Um, the other end more to a grafter or someone who can build an innings um, rather than sit on their own. Okay, now of course the Gujarat Titans will have plans for these two if they open. Speaking of whom, 
How do you rate the GT team right now? I know it's midway of the season, they're top of the pops. If you had to give them a number, Dirk, on 10, what would it be right now? Out of 10, well, they've dropped the game, haven't they? Um, yeah. So, that's oh, pretty good though. Look, can we give them eight and a half? Yeah. Um, I'm reluctant to go higher than that because there's always a reason why you can't go higher. You've got, you've got, there's always faults. Um, so they're not perfect, but gee, they've performed really well. They've got, uh, the big thing for me is they've got contributions from a lot of different people. Um, they've got middle order that's firing, um, uh, high strike rates with the bat all round. Um, and they've got a very bowling attack that's that's doing the job. So I, I think they're, uh, and, and importantly, they're winning crux times of games as well. So, um, yeah, there's a whole lot to like about them. I, I really like them as a team. Yeah, they've been winning ugly. They've been winning comprehensively, which is always a good sign for any team in any competition. Let's ask you about that top three, because you mentioned there are hardly any weaknesses. Uh, the top three... Are they carrying passengers there? Do you think Rashid Khan should probably, you know, throw the cat amongst the pigeons, I mean, so to speak, batting him there because we saw what he could do? How do they address that going ahead into the knockouts and more, I'm presuming? Well, I guess in that situation, you've got to start thinking, right, is he the best number three in that team? Probably not. Yeah. He's he's hardly fl play. You know, he's, he's got a duck and a 40 off 21 balls. Great 40 off 21 balls, but where was it? Or was it the depth? Um, and he showed that he's, he's pretty valuable down there. You, you don't want to waste that sort of strike rate and keep it in the sheds. You you want to use that someone who comes out and strikes like that. It's a, it's a really good asset to have. But I'm not sure that necessarily has to come in at number three. Um, absolutely, they're not getting anything out of, out of number three at the moment. And, and something has to give. Maybe maybe it's worth a shot I, I wouldn't do it personally um but there are better cricketing minds than me in that kkr side that that, that might you know just give it a shake it might, might be worth a shot what's, what's to lose because you're getting nothing out of number three at the minute yeah you're a modest man Dirk. now i say that because you're being really polite to the gt staff and it makes you think about whether they'll take a page out of the RR manual where they threw up Ashwin at that position to kind of get some quick runs. But we'll leave that there. I want to just ask you about Gujarat Titans and their bowling attack, which looked even more rounded with Alzari Joseph coming into the thick of things. Do you think that's the case now that they can afford to play Loki, Rashid and Alzari, three out of their four overseas, as just bowlers? Why not? Yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, it's work again. It's working, and I always really like the strongest bowling lineups go through the finals. And I keep saying that time and time again. I, I firmly believe that um, that bowling teams get you into the finals. He bowled really difficult overs. He bowled the sixth over, which is always incredibly tough. Um, Eleven fifteenth, he bowled the the fifteenth the other night and went for one run. Um, in a, you know relatively crunch time of the game. Um, he comes in with a bit of confidence and sort of aggression that I really like, whereas others have sort of been floating the ball and not really sort of, um, uh, oh, not really authentic in their attempts to try different types of balls. They kind of, you know, second guess themselves a bit, but he wasn't. He was, he was really impressive. I thought it was a great outing. Um, and yeah, I, I just think you keep playing that bowling attack. Why not? I, I really like the Gujarat bowling lineup, and I have all year. It's, of course, a Saturday afternoon encounter at the DY Partle. So let's see if Dirk can get his predictions right this time around to wrap up this preview. Who are you going for, purple or something of blue, which is dark blue or royal blue as GT have it? Which colour? <laughs> I'm not going purple. I'm going for whatever <laughs> that other colour, <laughs> whatever that colour you just said is. <laughs> I just think Gujarat are a solid outfit at the moment. They just find ways to win, and that's a really valuable thing to have. KKR, on the other hand, just haven't found it yet. They they they're a bit lost at sea in that regard. Um, 
particularly with that fourth and fifth bowler. I think it's it's costing them dearly. Uh, they haven't found an answer, and I'm not sure they'll find one yet. Okay, let's see how it really unfolds for the Knight Riders. They'll certainly want the points in this one. You guys can catch it all on cricket.com, of course, on Saturday. Stats, analysis, and, of course, a lot of takeaways from this chat, too. That's all we have in this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Avnish Hegde. Until the next time, it's a goodbye from us.